Now let's do the linear velocity part of the Jacobian. The first joint is revolute. So I'm going to have to take the rotation matrix from 0 to 0 times this vector that I've been calling k, which is 0, 0, 1. And I'll have to cross that with the origin of frame 3, which is my end effector, relative to frame 0, minus the origin of frame 0, which is i minus 1, relative to frame 0. I'm going to write out what each element of this uh, matrix should be, and then I'll calculate each element. So this is column 1 of the linear velocity part. Let's look at column 2. Column 2 also corresponds to a revolute joint. So here we'll have the rotation matrix of frame 1 relative to frame 0 times the k vector and we'll cross that with the origin of frame 3 relative to frame 0 minus the origin of frame i minus 1 this is column 2, so i is 2, minus 1 is 1, relative to frame 0. The third uh, column is a little bit easier because it's the prismatic joint. And the way that we do that with linear velocity is we take the rotation matrix of i minus 1. This is the third column, so i is 3, minus 1 is 2, multiplied by the k vector. And three columns is all I should have, because there are only three joints. So that completes my linear velocity Jacobian. Now, I just have to expand each of these terms to figure out what each one is. So let's start with column one. The rotation of frame zero relative to frame zero is the identity matrix times the vector 0, 0, 1 will give me the vector 0, 0, 1. Now, I have to cross that times these two origins subtracted from each other. Let's go see if we can figure out what the origin of 3 relative to 0 is. I can get the origin of frame 3 relative to frame 0 from my homogeneous transformation matrices. All I have to do is take this three element vector, which is the origin of frame 1, and add on this three element vector, which is the origin of frame 2 relative to frame 1, and then add on this three element vector, the origin of frame three relative to frame two. So the first element of this vector is going to be zero plus a two cosine theta two plus zero, which is a two times cosine theta two. I'll fill that expression in for the first element of my vector. The second element of my vector will be 0 plus a2 times the sine of theta 2 plus 0.
then I can go get the third element of this vector. The third element will be a1 plus 0 plus a3 plus 3. Now all I have to do is take the cross product of these two vectors. You may notice that I seem to have ignored the origin of frame 1 relative to frame 1. I did that because the origin of frame 0 relative to frame 0 is 0. So I just left that off here. If you don't remember how to do a cross product, you can simply look it up. Um, there's a good explanation on Wikipedia. Use your favorite linear algebra textbook. Um, there are many other sources, or come and ask me and I can show you how to do it. But it's a, a simple definition of how to multiply two matrices together. Or two, in this case, two vectors. And after you take the cross product, you get the result that I've shown you here. And that's the first column of the linear velocity uh, part of the Jacobian. Now, let's move on and expand the second column. The first thing we want to do is go look at what the rotation matrix is from frame 0 to frame 1. Here's the rotation matrix from frame 0 to frame 1. We get it from A1, our first homogeneous transformation matrix. We're going to multiply this matrix times the vector 0, 0, 1. So we'll just pull out the last column. Here I've written down the last column of the rotation matrix. The next thing I have to do is find the, uh, this part of the, the multiplication, the origin of frame 3 relative to frame 0 minus the origin of frame 1 relative to frame 0. I've already figured out the origin of frame 3 relative to frame 0. All I have to do now is subtract from this the origin of frame 1 relative to frame 0. And I can get that from my homogeneous transformation matrices also. The origin of frame 1 relative to frame 0 is here in A1. It's 0, 0, A1. I'm going to subtract this from my origin of frame 3 to frame 0. So I'm going to take this vector minus the vector 0, 0, A1. And this, this should be a, I left out my cross product there. I should be taking the cross product of these two vectors. After I take the cross product of those two vectors, here's what I get for the second column of my linear velocity Jacobian. The last piece I have to do is the third column. The third column is a bit easier because it's the prismatic joint. So all I have to do here is take the rotation matrix from 0 to 2 and pull out the third column of it. Getting the rotation matrix from frame 0 to frame 2 is a little bit more difficult than getting the other two rotation matrices that I've had to get because what I have here in my homogeneous transformation matrices is the rotation from frame 0 to frame 1 and the rotation from frame 1 to frame 2. In order to get the rotation from frame 0 to frame 2, 
I'll have to multiply these two rotation matrices together. I'm going to do that and I'll show you the result. I've multiplied out the two matrices and here's the result. If I can get it centered in the view here. Now I multiplied out the the two complete matrices and, t and showed you the complete result just as an example you really only need to get this third column right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this third column and that third column becomes the third column of my Jacobian matrix. Now I've completed the velocity part of the or the linear velocity part of the Jacobian matrix. That's what's shown here. And we already found the rotational part of the Jacobian matrix. The last thing I have to do is stick these two pieces together to get the complete Jacobian matrix.